Okay, this is the stereotypical um, IB problem with uh, photons, and ultimately they want to know um, what force the photons will exert, right? The, uh, the main idea here is that um, the energy and momentum of the, of the light at this wavelength, the main idea here is that we're going to use uh, force is change in momentum over time, right? Uh, and then the energy is easy. Energy is hc over lambda, right? So it's hf is equal to hc over lambda, right? So that's 6.626 uh, times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds, right? Uh, times, uh, let's see, uh, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th, and that's meters per second, right? So that's the speed of light, and then the wavelength here is uh, 656 nanometers times 10 to the minus 9th meters, right? Right, so 6.626 e minus 34 times 3e8 divided by 656 e minus 9. Okay, so the energy is um, 3.030 times 10 to the minus 19th joules, right? So that's that's this answer right here. Right, and then um, what is the momentum? And momentum is going to be uh, uh, h over lambda. I think this is the de Broglie wavelength equation, right? So that's 6.626 e minus 34 joule seconds, right, divided by 56. So uh, second entry divided by 656 e minus 9. And that's, um, that answer is 1.010 uh, times 10 to the minus 27th uh, and that's kilogram meters per second, right? So there's that, there's this. So there's our energy, there's our momentum, right? Okay. And then it says, how many photons a second does it emit? To do that, we're going to take, we know that every second, a 120 milliwatt laser, of course, gives off 120 milliwatt, millijoules, right? And so uh, 120 times 10 to the minus third, that's joules. And then the question is, how many of these guys is there in there, right? Okay, so we're going to divide that by 3.030, 10 to the minus 19th, right? So let's see, uh, 120 e minus 3. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. There we go, store that in A. Store that in B. Okay, so alpha A has the energy in it. There we go. Okay, so 120 E minus 3, right, divided by alpha A. So the number of photons per second, if you do this, right, this is joules per photon, right? If you divide that, you get uh, you get number of photons, right? So you get, and then this one, 3.96 uh, zero times 10 to the um, 17th, and that's photons per second, really, right? Because it's, it's, if it's 120 milliwatts, it's a 120 millijoules per second, right? So that's how many photons per second, right? And then now we can, now we can figure out uh, the force. The force is change in momentum over time, so that's going to be... Um, this many photons with this much momentum every second, right? So the change in momentum force is change in momentum over time, so it's going to be 3.960 times 10 to the 17th photons per second, right? And then it's and then it's 1.010 10 to the minus 27th and that's kilogram meters per second per photon, right? Right, and then uh, what we'll have then is, is uh, photons goes away the bias, and we'll have kilogram meters per second squared, which is of course a Newton, right? So this number times 
alpha b, which is where I stored this number. And I get, when I do that, I use unrounded numbers. Somewhat amazingly, all of this comes out to 4 times 10 to the minus 10th, exactly, according to my calculator. Yay. How is that? Why is it, why is it such an even number? That is a mystery. If you've watched it this far, hey, you're good.